Jake here for Extreme Terrain, and today I'm taking a look at this three inch TRD suspension lift kit fitting 2022 and newer Tundras without the air ride and the ABS system, also excluding the TRD Pro models. Now this lift kit is for the Tundra owner who wants a little bit of everything and a great balance. With Toyota approved parts, this full kit gets you the height you want for off-roading and fitting larger wheels and tires while maintaining all of your safety items and excellent ride quality. Now, clearly Toyota does not mess about when it comes to accessory parts and this kit is no exception. They clearly chose the pieces very carefully, making sure that this is gonna fit your Tundra just right. And they've given you more than enough stuff to make sure that this is a comprehensive, fully functional lift kit right out of the box. Lots of you probably remember watching Toyota trucks being piloted to victory in multiple different Baja races back in the 90s, and none were more famous than Ivan Ironman Stewart. His iconic trucks set the bar, and even now, you can get a little bit of that flavor on your modern day Tundra. Toyota Racing Development, or TRD for short, has come out with a comprehensive three inch lift kit to make your Tundra a bit more off-road ready and cooler to look at too. And this is a three inch lift kit, as the name would suggest. So you're gonna get a full three inches of lift up front versus stock with two inches of lift in the back. So this means that it's gonna function as a leveling kit as well, making the stance of your truck more even front to rear than how it would have come off the showroom floor. It gives the Tundra a menacing stance to go with its menacing face and will give you the ability to fit up to 35 inch tires. So you'll get some extra room for some bigger, beefier wheels and tires too. But obviously there is a lot more to it than just making some extra room. There are a ton of parts here, some of which we don't even have room to show you on the table just because there's not enough space. But let's start out with the big ticket items. First, you get Roush forged upper control arms from the front end to account for that extra height up front and help keep your truck in proper alignment. They have brand new ball joints and bushings already pressed in as well. Next, you get new shocks, both front and rear, and these are tuned by suspension giant Bilstein. So they're gonna offer an increase in travel to help support that additional height. But being Bilsteins, you can be certain that they also strike a great balance of on and off-road performance. They're designed to maintain a ride quality that is close to what you would get from the factory. And on the front shocks, you've got this adjustable collar right here, so you can set this spring perch to adjust the ride height exactly as you want it. You've got two little notches on here. Again, typical of Bilstein if you're familiar with their products. It's something we see on them a lot, something I really like because it gives you a little bit more flexibility. So again, you've got front and rear shocks that are going to be a nice match set. And you've also got these TRD springs in the iconic red colorway. Again, giving you that additional performance you're looking for when the going gets rough. Now these are gonna match up to the shocks perfectly, give you a confident and controlled ride and performance no matter what terrain you're on. On top of all of that, you can see there's a lot more stuff. You've got two brand new front axles too to accommodate for that extra lift. Because you're adjusting the suspension geometry, your stock axles may be pulled out a little bit further than they want, so Toyota has included these in here. You've also got new tie rod ends, stabilizer bar spacers, spring spacers for the rear to get you that extra two inches of lift, plus new rear bump stops, and new stabilizer bar end links to match up with the adjusted stabilizer bar too. So you've got a ton of stuff here. There's even a few things that we don't have on the table that I'll grab, such as, New soft brake lines for the rear and for the front. Again, since you're gonna be adjusting the way the truck sits, you're kind of pulling on those stock brake lines. So Toyota's included some longer ones in there to make sure that you don't have any issues with it. Now, all of that comes with all the new hardware too. So you've got pretty much everything you need. The only piece you're really not replacing on here that's part of the suspension system are the rear springs. But again, you've got these big spacers here that are gonna take care of that lift for you. However, all of that being said, I think the best part here is that because this is a Toyota factory accessory, it doesn't affect your driver aid systems. So the entirety of the factory safety sense 2.5 is going to continue to function just as it would if the truck was stock. So that means your lane keeping assist, your active cruise control, all those types of things, your crash mitigation systems are all going to function exactly as they were intended to right out of the factory. So you get basically what is as close to a factory lift as possible with the performance and good looks to match. And of course, because it's Toyota stuff, it's all going to be very good quality too. Speaking of which, we should talk about construction. So these upper control arms, like I mentioned earlier, are made from forged steel. Again, they've got new ball joints and bushings already pressed in, making them a super strong setup 
and a super easy part of the install. The shocks again are your typical Bilsteins. They've got a large diameter shock body, new bushings on the bottoms here, and you've got these big chromed hardened steel piston rods and a nice zinc plating on the outside here. The springs are made from wound steel. And they're very thick, and again, they've got that really nice bright red powder coat over top. It's a nice little pop of color since you're gonna be able to see into the wheel well with this on your truck. All the other stuff too is also quite nice, as you would expect from an OEM type of fitment. You've got these stabilizer bar spacers. These are made from fabricated steel and they're finished in this nice matte black powder coat. Same deal with the rear spring spacers too. Again, fabricated steel finished in a more glossy black powder coat too. You've got your rear bump stops with brand new powder coated bracket on both sides plus an extra bump stop here, brand new again. Not that you're gonna need one on a truck this brand new, but again, it's good that it's included here. Plus you've got new end links that are a little bit longer, tie rod ends with new ball joints on both of them, and you've got these brand new axles with the CV joints in here and all the associated hardware that you're gonna need. So safe to say, this is gonna be very comprehensive. All the stuff here looks good. It's gonna be protected from the elements as best as it can be, and it's gonna fit right, right out of the gate. Now, as you might expect from a part that is direct from Toyota, and a kit that is this comprehensive, it does not come cheap. Pricing for this one comes in right around $3,100, and that does put it on the more expensive side for this size of lift kit. However, for as complete a kit as this is, and especially one that comes from Toyota themselves, it's really nice to just be able to take it out of the box and know that it's gonna work because it's designed specifically for your truck by the people who engineered it in the first place, with of course, a little bit of help from Roush and Bilstein. And for the peace of mind alone, I would call this a good value for money. But again, you have to keep in mind all of the stuff that you're getting in here, some of which we don't even have on the table just because there's no room. You've got all the bracketry and hardware that you need. Again, pretty much everything but the rear springs, axles, all this stuff. It comes really complete. So for what you're getting, you are getting a lot for your money. Installation is gonna get a three out of three on our difficulty meter, and as you might expect with something like this, plan on it taking you a full day to complete. Now, as with any lift kit, there's a lot to do. Again, plan on it taking you a while. Make sure you've got the time set aside if you're gonna to attempt to do this yourself. And also, as usual with a lift kit, make sure you get an alignment once you've got everything on and giving it a little time to settle in. But enough talking about it. With that, let's head out to the shop where we'll give you a detailed walkthrough of the install. The tools you're gonna to need for this install include various style impact guns, an electric or regular 3 8 ratchet, a 3 8 extension, a half inch extension, a 14, 17, and 19 millimeter ratcheting wrench, a 7 8 19, 8, and 10 millimeter wrench, a 10 millimeter flare nut wrench, a clip removal tool, pliers, needle nose pliers, needle nose vice grips, a panel removal tool, a hammer, a pry bar, torque wrench, crescent wrench, a ball joint removal tool, a rubber mallet, a chisel bit, a bungee cord, 10 millimeter Allen key, a 10, 12, 17, and 19 millimeter chrome sockets, a 19, 22, also 22, and 24 millimeter sockets, a 39 millimeter 12 point socket, a Phillips head screwdriver, a half inch swivel socket, safety glasses, and a spring compressor tool, a pull jack and lift or jack and jack stands. What's up guys, today we're gonna to be installing a lift kit on our Tundra, so let's get started. All right guys, so the first step of the front uninstall, we're gonna grab a clip removal tool. I'm gonna to remove this cover here. So I'm gonna slide my clip removal tool under the cover and pry up. Now those same steps for this cover here. Make you repeat this process on the other side. 
Next, we're gonna be removing this brake line here. So the first thing that I'm going to do is grab a 10 millimeter open box end wrench. We're gonna crack our brake line loose. I'm gonna unscrew and put this cap on so we don't drain out our master cylinder. Make sure that you have a rag there because it's gonna drip. There we go. Pull up and out. Slide our cap over so we don't lose any more fluid. Set that back. Then you can grab a set of needle nose pliers. We're gonna remove this gray clip here. I'm gonna slide this on the tab and twist and pull, like so. Now your brake hose is disconnected from the brake line. All right, now we're gonna come down to this bracket here. I'm gonna grab a 12 millimeter socket and remove it out of the bracket. Now we're gonna do that same process here like we did up top. So we're gonna crack that loose with our 10 millimeter open end wrench. See if we can unthread it by hand. A couple more times with the wrench. Now that we got that disconnected, Grab our needle nose pliers, pull out our tab here. From there, we can pull out our brake line. Now we can remove our hose. So now that you have your brake line disconnected, we're gonna be removing our caliper. So we're gonna have to grab a 19 millimeter socket to remove these two caliper cage bolts. Set that off to the side. And for the top one, make sure you hold your caliper because it will come loose. Grab our bolt. Now we can remove our caliper. Now that we have our caliper removed, we're gonna remove our rotor. All we have to do is remove it from the studs. Now that your caliper and rotor is removed on the driver's side, you can repeat that process for the passenger side. So now we're gonna be removing our bump stop. We're gonna grab a set of pliers. And we're just gonna twist this off because it's threaded. There we go, now that we got that loose, we just twist that off. Now you repeat this on the other side. So now we're gonna be removing our tie rod out of the knuckle. So we're gonna grab a set of needle nose pliers to remove our cotter pin first. So we're just gonna twist back our pin so it's flush with the hole. We just slide our pin out. What you could also do is you can grab a hammer and tap on your pliers. Now we have our cotter pin removed and now we can grab a 24 millimeter socket to remove our castle nut. Now that our castle nut is removed, we can grab a hammer or a ball joint press to remove our stud out of the knuckle. Now our tie rod is removed. So now we're gonna remove the speed sensor here. We're gonna take a 10 millimeter socket. We're gonna remove this bolt. To remove our sensor. Not quite yet. We're gonna have to swap our sockets over to a 12 millimeter socket. We're gonna remove this bolt here to loosen up our bracket. Just gonna thread that back into the hole. Now we can disconnect our speed sensor. Set that off to the side. So now we can grab our 12 millimeter socket and remove this bracket here. Thread this back into our hole. Now one more up on top of the upper control arm. 
Now we can just grab our harness and lay this off to the side. So now we're gonna be removing our sway bar end link. We're gonna use a 19 millimeter ratcheting wrench to remove this bolt and our nut. Gonna loosen them both up first. Remove our bolt. Now we can disconnect the stud from the sway bar. But you might need to use a hammer to get that out depending on how seized it is. Now we can get a hammer and tap on our stud. We can pull down on our sway bar with our pry bar. Slide the bottom end out a little bit. There we go. Now we can slide the bottom part out. And you can repeat this process on the other side. So now we have our tie rod removed. We have to prepare for when we slide on our new tie rod ends. So we're gonna have to grab a Sharpie or a permanent marker. And we're gonna mark the notch here on the nut. So it makes it a little bit easier when you have to come for alignments. So now you can either grab a crescent wrench or a 25 millimeter wrench, and we're gonna loosen up our nut. There we go like so. Back that off a little bit. Now we can just twist our tie rod end off. All right, now you can repeat this process on the other side. So now we're gonna be removing the lower strut mount. So we're gonna need a 7 8 wrench or a 22 millimeter wrench, a 22 millimeter socket, and a swivel socket. So our nut and washer is removed. Now I'm just gonna back the bolt out. All right, now our lower control arm is moving freely. So now we're gonna be disconnecting the upper control arm to the knuckle. We're gonna grab a needle nose pliers to remove this clip here. Might need to grab a hold of the hooked end and bring it around. Now that we got that removed, now we're going to grab a 19 millimeter ratcheting wrench to loosen up our castle nut. Now we can bring our castle nut flush to our stud because we're going to need a ball joint press to remove this out of the upper control arm due to the fact that these are aluminum and if you hit them with a hammer it will start to dent and it could injure your knuckle. Now you can repeat this process on the other side. So before we remove our upper control arm to the knuckle, we're gonna have to tap off this uh, cover here with a chisel and a hammer. You wanna be very gentle so that we don't mushroom the top. I'm just gonna go evenly around the edges. Give it a little push. Come down to the bottom here. Now 
Then what I like to do is I like to grab a flathead screwdriver and just give it a little twist on both sides. Now our cover's removed. Now that we have our black cover removed, we're gonna need a needle nose pliers to remove our cotter pin. Twist this up so it's adjacent with the other end, like so, and then we can go to the other end, start to wiggle out our cotter pin. And this gray nut will also come with it, so don't be alarmed. Slide this in the inside, give it a little tap with a hammer, or along the outside. All right, we're getting there. All right, now we have our cotter pin removed. We can slide out our gray tab here. Now you're going to grab a 39 millimeter 12 point socket to remove our nut. And if you're having trouble while you're getting this off and the hub is spinning, you can put two lug nuts on the side and put a pry bar with it so you can keep it steady to remove your nut. Now you can repeat this process on the other side. So now that we have the nut removed for the axle, we have to grab a ball joint press. We're gonna slide this up on the top here. And I left the castle nut on here just for this purpose. We don't want to mushroom the end of the stud. So we wanna make sure this is nice and even. Gonna tighten that up by hand. Now I'm going to use a 19 millimeter ratcheting wrench to tighten this up. Just wanna do it very carefully and slow. And boom. Now we can remove our ball joint press. Now I recommend using a bungee cord before you disconnect your bolt or your nut, I'm sorry. So now we're gonna grab a pry bar, pull, pull down on our upper control arm. We can remove our castle nut, we can lift up. And now our upper control arm is disconnected from our knuckle. So now we're gonna remove the axle from the hub itself. An easy way to do this is you grab your nut. We're gonna thread this on until it's flush with the axle. Like so. And we're gonna grab that 39 millimeter socket, put that over top. Now we can hit it with a hammer. And from here, this pin here, you can grab an air hammer with a pointed tip on it to bang it out and it'll come right out. Now you repeat that process on the other side. So now we can pull our knuckle down and push back on our axle itself. And from there we can pull down and up. Now our axle is sitting out freely. So now we're going to be removing the axle from the differential. There is machine slots around the axle that we're going to be using a pry bar like so with a striker on the end and a hammer. And we're gonna give it taps and twist it around so we can remove this axle. So I'm gonna grab a buddy to help me twist and now I'm gonna use the hammer and tap it out. Twist it. If you see fluid draining, that is to be expected. Twist it, please. There we go. There it is. And now your axle is removed. And now you can repeat this process on the other side. So now we're going to be removing these two bolts here that holds in the knuckle. So we're gonna grab a 22 millimeter socket. And we're gonna loosen up these two bolts. 
Make sure you hold on to the top of the knuckle because it will fall once these are removed. I'm going to have some pressure up top. Remove our first bolt. Again, make sure you're holding it because it's going to fall. All right. Now your knuckle is removed. So now to remove the lower part of the knuckle, we're going to have to grab a needle nose pliers and remove our cotter pin from the castle nut. Make sure that's as straight as possible. Push it out from the other side. So now we can grab a 24 millimeter socket and we're going to remove this castle nut. So now that we have our nut loose, we're going to bring that flush with the stud. I'm going to grab a different style ball joint remover and bring that over each lip. And I'm going to thread this bottom piece and get that in the middle of the stud itself, like so. Now I'm going to grab a 16 millimeter ratcheting wrench. And we're going to tighten this up by hand. So now that your knuckle is free, you can unthread our nut. Now you can repeat this process on the other side. All right guys, so now we're going to fully remove the strut here. Previously in the uninstall, we removed the lower mount. Now we're going to move up to these four studs here. We're going to grab a 14 millimeter ratcheting wrench and we're going to remove these four nuts. Going to loosen them all up first. Now once they're all loose, we take our nuts off. Two more in the back. Now we can grab a pry bar and pry down the lower control arm to get our strut out. So now we're ready to remove our strut. I have a buddy to help me pull down on our lower control arm so we can get this out easier. So now, he's going to pull down, I'm going to lift up, and now your strut is removed, so you can repeat that process on the other side. Alright guys, so we had to lower down the vehicle to remove the upper control arm due to the long bolt. It hits the ECM once you're trying to pull it out. So what we got to do for this is we have to remove our air box, and then once we're done with that, there'll be the ECM that we have to remove off of there, then we can slide our bolt out. So we're going to grab a 10 millimeter socket and loosen up our clamp. We're going to disconnect our clip here for the mass airflow sensor, like so. Now we can remove the boot from our air box. Now we can remove our air box. So now we can take our 10 millimeter socket with an extension. We're going to remove this bolt here, here, and there's one more over here for the top part. Push our harness out of the way. Move this one. And we're going to grab a clip removal tool. We're going to pry up on this clip here. Now we can lift our ECM out of the way so we can get our upper control arm bolt out of our upper control arm. So now we're going to remove our nut to the upper control arm. We're going to grab a 7 8 wrench or a 22 millimeter wrench. 
I'm gonna loosen up this side here. And we can remove this by hand. Remove our washer. Make sure you don't throw these away because we're going to be reusing them for the install. This will be the time where we loosen up our ECM bolts for a reason. We're going to push this up and out of the way. And we can slide our bolt. All right, so now your driver's side upper control arm is removed. For the passenger side, there's no ECM, so all you have to do is slide your bolt out. All right, guys, so next we're going to be removing the active aero spoiler. So we're going to come up to this connector here, press on your tab, and remove. All right, now there's two bolts located in these two holes here. We're going to remove them with our 10 millimeter socket. Now we got two more bolts on each side, 10 millimeter socket. Then you can remove those two bolts on the other side and then your active arrow will be removed. All right, so now that we have our active arrow out of the way, we're gonna grab a 12 millimeter socket and we're gonna remove these four bolts that hold in our splash pan. And now our splash pan is removed. So now that our active arrow and splash shield is removed, we're gonna to have to remove our sway bar. So there is two bolts on each side that we're gonna to have to remove with a 17 millimeter socket. Now would be a good time to grab a buddy to help you hold up the other end while you remove the last threads on your bolt. Now you can carefully drop down your sway bar and now your uninstall is complete. Alright guys, so now we moved our strut over to the spring compressor. We have our teeth lined up on the spring. We're going to twist this down to compress our spring. Once that's done, we're going to remove our nut here. And we can take our top hat off and the bottom will come off. Then we can do our switching process. All right, we'll go one more turn. Now, as you can see, it's loose. So now I'm going to grab a 19 millimeter ratcheting wrench and an 8 millimeter wrench. I'm going to slide the ratcheting wrench over the nut. Then we're going to put this on top of our stud so it doesn't spin. There we go. Now we can just keep loosening this until our nut is off. You want to make sure when you're getting to the last threads that you hold the bottom. All right, and now we can transfer our top hat and hardware over to our new strut. 
Now we have our new spring on the compressor following with the top hat. We're going to compress our spring so we can get our strut. Give this a little test fit first. So we'll slide our bottom washer onto the top of the top hat and our bushing with the washer. Now our nut, we'll thread that on. And right on the top of the top hat, it says out with an arrow. You're going to line that up with the lower strut mount. So once that's lined up, going to grab our 19 I'm going to start tightening it down then once you feel it's starting to get tight I'm going to throw that 8 millimeter wrench just to hold it in place Now we can relieve the tension on the spring. All right, and now we can get this onto the vehicle. All right guys, so in order to get our new larger strut in place, we have to loosen up our two bolts on the lower control arm so we have more play. So I'm going to grab a 24 millimeter socket and we're just gonna loosen this up Make sure you do not remove this fully, like so. Come on over to the other side. Make sure you hold this up. All right. As you can see, that goes all the way down. So now we can get our strut into place. So now we're going to grab and no. So now we're going to line up our studs with the holes in the mount. We're going to get these lined up. I'm just going to thread one of our nuts on top, to hold this down in place. So now we can lift our lower control arm and line our strut up into the strut mount. Slide our bolt through. Now if this thing gives you a hard time, you can whack it with a rubber mallet, like so. We're gonna grab our washer and our nut. We're gonna thread it on. Now we can go back up top and we're gonna tighten up all of our Ford nuts. Now we can thread the remaining nuts on. There we go. Now you can grab a 14 millimeter ratcheting wrench. We're gonna tighten these up. Two more in the back. Now
Now you can repeat this process on the other side. So now we can tackle the challenge of putting in our upper control arm with this long bolt. So we're gonna thread and push our long bolt through the fender liner here. Like so we're gonna get that lined up. We can grab our upper control arm. Thread this through. Just wanna feed this through. There we go. Yeah, there we go. So now we can grab our washer and our nut, put it on the back side. Thread that on our bolt. So now you can grab a 7 8 wrench or a 22 millimeter wrench. We're gonna tighten up our nut. We want to make sure that when we're tightening this, we have our upper control arm facing up. So when we install our knuckle, it'll go in no problem. All right, now you can repeat this process on the other side. So now we can tighten up our lower control arm with these eccentrics. A good tip you could do is mark where your eccentrics are so when you go for the alignment, it's not going to be hectic. So now we're gonna grab that 24 millimeter socket and a 15 16 wrench. We're gonna tighten these two down. Now we can install our new tie rod ends. So we're gonna remove our factory nut Set that off to the side. Now we're gonna take this sleeve that is not threaded. And we're gonna slide this into our tie rod. Then our threaded end will be going like this. I'm just gonna spin this on. It's nice and tight. Now we can thread in our outer tie rod. I'm gonna make sure that we have our tie rod facing up with the stud. Now you can repeat this process on the other side. All right guys, so now we're gonna be sliding in our axle shaft. We're gonna slide in with this side and not the side that's threaded. I threw some gear oil and coated it around here so it slides in a little easier. Now we're gonna line up our splines in the diff. And then from here, what I like to do is I like to grab a bungee cord and wrap this around. To suspend it. Now we're going to grab a pry bar and a hammer and we're going to bang it in from down here at the spring. So now I'm going to line the end of my pry bar up on this lip here and grab a hammer and hit it at the bottom. Now I'm going to have my buddy spin the axle. There we go. All right guys, so now that you have both of your axles into place, I'm gonna grab a 10 millimeter Allen socket to remove this bolt. Crack that loose. This is going to be your fill area. So we're gonna remove this bolt, set that off to the side. Then we're going to grab 75, 85 gear oil in a transfer pump. I'm gonna put this tube through here. And a way to tell how it is full is you'll, once you have a steady stream coming out of this hole, it is full. All right, we have a steady stream so we can remove from here. Now once the stream starts to slow down, we're gonna reinsert and tighten up our bung. 
All right, now it's slowed down. So we're gonna reinsert our bung. And we'll tighten that back up with our 10 millimeter Allen socket. And now your gear oil is topped off. So now that we got that tightened up, we could use some brake clean to clean up our surface. And you can wipe that up with a rag. So now we're gonna be installing our new ball joint cradle. So we're gonna slide that into the stud, thread our new nut on, and we can grab our 24 millimeter socket. We're gonna tighten this up. Make sure that we tighten this enough so the slots in the castle nut line up with the hole in the stud. There we go. Now we can slide in our new cotter pin in the hole of the stud. Going to grab the longer end with a needle nose pliers. Make sure that long end's facing down. We're just gonna bend this over our stud. This one we could twist over to the side. Like so. Now you can repeat this process on the other side. So now we're going to install our knuckle. We're gonna be inserting the axle through the splines here. So we're gonna slide this in, make sure that the splines are intact. Then we can grab our factory knuckle bolts. We're gonna go through that lower. We're gonna thread that in. So now that we have our first bolt threaded in, we're gonna grab our axle nut and thread this on so it doesn't disconnect from itself. We're gonna tighten this up later. So now I can grab my second bolt. Thread that into the knuckle. Now we can tighten these two bolts down with our 22 millimeter socket. Now you can repeat this process on the other side. So now we're going to get the stud on the upper control arm into the knuckle. We're going to pull down to reveal the stud. Then we're going to thread on our new included castle nut onto our stud here. And let that go. Now we're going to tighten this up with a 19 millimeter socket. And once again, like the other castle nut, we're gonna line the hole in the stud up with the castle nut. Then we can grab our cotter pin, and the straight is going to slide into the stud, and this hook is going to wrap around and clip into the side of the castle nut. So now you can repeat this process on the other side. So now we're gonna attach our tie rod to the knuckle here. So we're gonna bring our tie rod up into the stud. We're gonna thread our castle nut on. And we're gonna tighten this down with the 24 millimeter socket. Now we can slide our new cotter pin through the hole. Grab our needle nose pliers. I'm gonna bend this upward. All right, so now your tie rod's in place. You do that on the other side. Next, we'll reinstall our rotor. To hold that in place, I'm gonna thread in two lug nuts. Next, we'll slide on our caliper. Grab our cage bolts. I'm going to thread them in up top here. Now we'll tighten these down with our 19 millimeter ratcheting wrench.
Now you can install the rotor and the caliper on the other side. Next, we're gonna tighten up our axle nut here. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab a pry bar and put it between the two lug nuts. So now we can grab that 39 millimeter 12 point socket and we're gonna to torque this down to 250 foot pounds. Actually, we could spin this over to here. All right. Now you can torque your axle nut down on the other side. So now we can throw this gray cap over, like so. Make sure that the slot is open for the hole in the axle. I'm gonna slide our new cotter pin through. Grab our needle nose pliers, bend this around. And we'll go the opposite way for the top part. Now we can grab our hub cap and center that over our hub. We're gonna grab a rubber mallet and we're gonna tap around until this is fully seated. Now you can repeat this process on the other side. Now we're gonna reinstall our ABS system. So we're gonna grab our bolt, thread this in to our new upper control arm. Tighten that down with a 12 millimeter socket. And remove this bolt here. We're gonna line this, we're gonna line this bracket up. Thread our bolt in, tighten that down, then we'll come over to the other side and we'll grab our bracket, move our bolt, have this bracket line up, thread that into the hole, tighten that down with a 12 millimeter socket. Now we're gonna swap our sockets out to a 10 millimeter socket. We'll remove our bolt here. Insert our sensor, like so. We thread our bolt in. Now we can tighten that up with our 10 millimeter socket. Now you can repeat this process on the other side. So now we can install our new brake lines. We're gonna start down here by the caliper first. So as you can see, this has a certain cut to it, which is gonna fit right into the bracket here. Like so. Aim this into our brake line. Then we can grab our new clips that are included in the kit. We're going to slide these in to hold our hose in place, like so. We're going to grab our brake line, push that into our new hose, and grab our flange and thread that into our new hose. And grab our 10 millimeter wrench, and we're going to tighten this up. Good. Now we're gonna be doing that same process up top here. We're gonna push this off to the side. And get that lined up. Like there. Slide in our new clip. Now we're gonna remove that cap. We wanna do this fairly quickly so we don't lose our brake fluid. Slide that in. Thread it in the flange. 10 millimeter wrench. There we go. So now that we have both ends of the brake hose connected, we're gonna be putting it onto this bracket here. So I'm gonna remove this bolt. 
gonna set up just like that. So where this hook here slides right into that fitting, right in our bolt. We tighten that down with our 12 millimeter socket. Make you repeat that on the other side. All right guys, so we're ready to put on our sway bar here. We have our sway bar block that came with the kit and these longer bolts, which were also included. We're gonna slide them through the two holes. So it looks like this. Then I'm gonna grab a buddy to help me lift this up into the location. And then we'll thread that in. So now we can lift this up into place. We're gonna thread in our longer bolts. So now before we tighten down our sway bar, we're gonna grab our new sway bar end links. We're gonna grab that adapter that was also included. It's gonna slide over like so. Bring this into the stud first. Let me get thread in our bolt. That was also included in the kit. Now we can get our top stud into our sway bar. Then we can grab the nut that was on the original sway bar end link, put that onto our new one. Now we can grab a 19 millimeter socket and we're gonna tighten both of these down. Now you repeat that on the other side. Now we can tighten down our sway bar. Now we're going to grab a 17 millimeter socket. We're gonna tighten up our four bolts that hold in the sway bar. So now we're gonna install our new bump stop. It also comes included with a spacer. We're gonna put it like so. We're gonna to go to the original location and we're just gonna thread this in. All right, now you can repeat that on the other side. All right guys, so next step is reinstalling our splash shield here. I drew out a template for you guys that in the instructions, it includes you to cut along here so it clears the sway bar block that we have here. But in our case, for demonstration purposes, we will not be doing so. So now we can get this up into place. So now our splash guard is gonna go under the sway bar. Grab our bolts. Two more over here. And we can tighten these up with our 12 millimeter socket. So now we're gonna reinstall our active aero spoiler. First, we're gonna bring our sides up. I'm gonna thread that into the side mounts. Same process on this side. And grab your 10 millimeter socket and tighten these down. Come over and do that on the other side. All right guys, I just want to clarify, if you have an active aero spoiler on your Tundra, you're going to have to permanently remove that due to the fact that there is now lift blocks on the sway bars. And when you lift up your active aero, it's going to hit and it will not close fully. So you're going to have to remove them with those six 10 millimeter bolts. 
and your active arrow spoiler will be removed. All right guys, so the first step of this uninstall, we're gonna be removing our control arm in the rear. So we're gonna grab a 19 millimeter wrench and a 19 millimeter socket and remove this bolt. Now we can lift up on our jack stand a little bit. Gonna thread off our nut. Gonna keep raising that up. Now you can repeat this process on the other side for that nut. So now once you have both bolts removed, like so, now your bar will just come right off. So now we're gonna uninstall our rear shock absorber. So we're gonna grab a 17 millimeter ratcheting wrench and we're gonna remove this bolt. All right, now we can go up to the top. Now for the top nut, we're gonna slide our 19 millimeter ratcheting wrench over the top. Just gonna let it sit there for a second, because now we're gonna grab a vice grip and attach that onto the top. Clamp that down. So now we can loosen up our nut. Now we can remove our vice grip, set that off to the side. Now we can continue ratcheting. All right. Now your nut is removed. So if your rear mount is stuck in the stud, you could use a pry bar and a hammer to bang this out. I also recommend you thread your nut on the top a couple threads so it doesn't come flying off. So I'm just gonna line this up on the side of the mount, take my hammer, and you can remove it. So now we're gonna remove our bump stop here. We're gonna be removing three bolts, these two and the top one. Remove that with a 12 millimeter socket. Top one. All right, now you can repeat that process for the other side. Next, we're gonna remove our sway bar end links. I'm gonna grab a 17 millimeter ratcheting wrench to remove these two nuts. Now we can come over to our lower nut. Now we can use that same size wrench to remove our lower nut. Now would be a good idea, you can grab a mallet to knock the stud out of the sway bar. Like so. Now you repeat this process on the other side. All right guys, so next step, we're gonna be uninstalling our brake lines. So we're gonna grab a needle nose pliers and remove these retaining clips up top. Just gonna back that off the line so it's free. Just gonna do that other side. There we go. So now you can grab yourself a pair of vice grips. And we're gonna clamp that onto this fitting here. 
I'm gonna grab our box open 10 millimeter wrench. I'm just gonna loosen up our fitting here. Make sure you throw a rag down on the ground because this is going to leak brake fluid. See if we can just spin this off by hand. All right. Now we got our first brake line disconnected. We have this off to the side, dangling down. Now we can repeat that procedure for the one next to it. Unscrew our fitting here. This would be a good time you can grab some safety glasses so you don't get any of this brake fluid in your eye. Set this off to the side. And now we can tackle our lower hoses. Now for the bottom section, it's gonna be that same process as up top. I'm gonna grab our needle nose pliers and wiggle our clip out of place. There we go. Same for that lower one. All right. Good idea, you could throw a vice grip on the back. The same as we did on the top. There we go. Got the first one. Now our first line is removed. Now we'll relocate our vice grip down to our lower one. Now we'll take our 10 mil and we'll remove our fitting. Take off our vice grip. Unthread our fitting by hand. Grab a hold of that back end while you spin the fitting off. All right, now both brake lines are removed. All right guys, so before we remove our spring here, we're gonna have to remove these two brackets so we can release the tension from our brake line. So we're gonna grab a 12 millimeter socket and remove these two bolts. I'm gonna slide that off to the side, thread our bolt back in. And we can do that same process up here. And one more up here. Place that bracket off to the side Spreader bolt back into the hole. All right, now to remove our spring here, we're gonna lower our pole jacks as far as they can go. If you still don't have enough clearance, you could lift your lift up a click or two so you have more room. So now that we have this all the way down, we can grab a pry bar. We can go under the spring here, lift up. and now our spring is removed. Now that your driver's side spring is removed, you can repeat that process on the other side. All right guys, so now for the rear install, we're gonna be sliding on our spacer for the coil. This thread here and stud is gonna be going into this hole here, and this guide is going to be going through this slot here. So we're gonna lift that up into place. Once we have that, we're gonna thread our included nut on the top. All right, so this is where your nut's going to be placed. We're gonna grab our 15 16 wrench. We're gonna tighten this down. Make it repeat this process on the other side. All right guys, so to get our spring back into the vehicle, we're gonna use a spring compressor here. We're gonna grab these top hooks, set them into the coil, and press in our pins. 
like so. And for the rear, at the bottom, it's the same thing. There we go. So now we can grab our 19 millimeter socket with an impact. Line this up. Now we're gonna compress the spring. Now we can get this onto the vehicle. All right, so now we have our spring compressed, we're ready to get it onto the vehicle. We're gonna make sure that you throw in your bump stop here. So we're gonna line this up. Get that lined up in the place. We're not going to worry about the end of the coil going into the perch quite yet. We're gonna loosen up our clamp here, and once that's done, we can twist it into the perch. So now I'm gonna grab my 19 millimeter socket. We're gonna loosen up our coil. There we go. Remove our hooks. Might have to loosen up our compressor. Set our compressor off to the side. Now we can twist our spring so that the end fits in just like that. Now you can repeat this process on the other side. All right guys, so now we're gonna install our shocks. We're gonna grab our OEM bushing. We're gonna slide that over the top. We're gonna take our lower mount. We're gonna slide that in the stud and thread in our bolt. We don't have to tighten it all the way just yet. Just gonna leave it like that. Now we're gonna compress our shock to get it into our hole. And then we're gonna grab our second set of OEM bushings and put that on top with our OEM nut. All right, so to get our stud a little bit farther up, you could raise your pull jacks like I'm doing now. Then we can grab our top OEM bushing and this hole here is gonna go through the hole that we put our shock through. Like so. Grab our OEM nut, thread that on top. Then we can grab a 19 millimeter ratcheting wrench. We're gonna tighten up this top one. There we go, now that hole sat into the mount. Just gonna keep tightening it up. All right. Now we can tighten up our bottom one. In the bottom one, we can use a 17 millimeter ratcheting wrench to tighten this up. Good, now we can repeat this process on the other side. All right, so now we can reinstall our OEM sway bar end link. So we're gonna put this end with the plastic cover through our sway bar. Just gonna thread our nut on, a couple threads. Push up on your sway bar. Now your stud will go through the bracket. Put our factory nut back on. So now we can tighten our two sway bar nuts up with our 17 millimeter ratcheting wrench. Now you can repeat this process on the other side. So now we can install our new bump stop. We're gonna be reusing the factory bolts that we took the old one off of. So we're gonna line up our holes Thread in our bolts. And for the other side, now you can grab a 12 millimeter socket and we're gonna tighten these three down. Make can repeat this on the other side. All right guys, so now we're gonna be installing our new brake lines. Just an important note, the left side of the top bracket is going to go to the top brake line. 
and vice versa. The right side is going to be going to the lower. So first we're going to attach it down here. We're going to slide our brake line, brake hose through our bracket. We can slide our flange into here and we can thread this in by hand like so. So now we're going to grab the vice grips and go behind the bracket just to hold this down into place. Then we're going to grab our open end 10 millimeter wrench. Going to hold our vice grip. We're going to tighten up our flange. Make sure you don't over tighten it because it will leak. So now we have our new brake lines that were included in the kit. We're going to install the lower one first. There is a pattern here that will line up with the bracket. Goes like this. Then we're going to slide our new clips like so. And we can grab our brake line itself. Put that into our hose. We're going to thread in that flange up top. There we go. Now we can grab our open 10 millimeter box wrench. You tighten this up. You just want to keep on going until it gets snug. You want to make sure that we don't over tighten this because it will start to leak. Good. Now you can repeat this process for the one above it. All right guys, so now I have the lower hose in my hand. The lower hose is going to come over here to the one facing farthest away from you. I'm going to slide that clip into place like so. Grab our brake line, make sure we take our cap off. It's going to start leaking again. Get our brake line into our hose. We can start threading it in. Then we'll grab our 10 millimeter box wrench. We're going to tighten this up. All right. Now you can repeat this process for the other bracket. Get that lined up. Press our clip in. Remove the cap. And get this into our new hose. Grab that 10 mil wrench and we're going to tighten this up. All right. Now your brake lines are on. All right guys, so we're in the home stretch for our rear. We're going to have to slide in our control arm up into our first mount. We're going to slide our factory bolt into that end. Just going to thread this on a couple threads to get started. Now, as you can tell, this hole does not line up with the control arm. So I have a little tip for you guys you can even do at home. You're going to grab a ratchet strap and put it on the control arm or the mount on this side. We're going to bring this one over to our mount on the other side. We're going to pull this tight. Start ratcheting. While you do that, you can get your bolt ready. Give it one more little tug. And we can thread that into the back. And leave that tight. So now you can grab your 19 millimeter socket and we're going to tighten up our first bolt here. Then we can move up to our next one. We're going to grab a 19 millimeter wrench with our 19 millimeter socket. Then you can remove your ratchet and your install is complete for the rear. So now that your new suspension components are installed, you can go back through and tighten up your brackets. Place our bracket over top. Tighten that down with our 12 millimeter socket.
Then we can move up to our top one here. Tighten this up with our 12 millimeter socket. Now you can repeat this process on the other side and your install will be complete for the rear. So now that our vehicle is raised up by three inches, in the kit it includes these fog light covers because in select states, your fog lights will be three inches above regulation height. So what we have to do is put in these fog light covers. So to get started, we're gonna remove our bumper. So the first thing we'll do to remove our bumper is we're gonna grab a 10 millimeter socket. I'm gonna remove these 10 10 millimeter bolts to remove our fender flare. Set these off to the side. Now we can come up to the front of our fender flare. I'm just gonna give this a light tug. Work your way around. Now you can repeat this process on the other side. So now we can go up under the vehicle and we're gonna remove these four bolts here with our 10 millimeter socket. Now you have four more bolts up top in the engine bay. Same 10 millimeter socket. Let's set these off to the side. Now we can come over here and we're going to disconnect these two connectors here. So now we can press in on the tabs on the side to remove our connector. Then we can grab a clip removal tool. We're gonna to pry up on this tab, like so. And we're gonna do that same thing for this connector. Remove that with our clip tool. Then we can move over to the other side. And after you move the other connector on the other side, we're gonna remove this push clip here. Now you can remove that push clip on the other side. So now at this point, we can remove our bumper. We're gonna go on each end where the fender flares are and pull back to remove the clip. You hear a pop. Like so. Come on over to the other side. Make sure you hold the middle of that bumper. Sort of give it a little wiggle. A little bit from the bottom. Make sure you're still holding that. Now from here, just keep working it. All right, now your bumper is removed. So now we're gonna be removing this fan assembly. There's gonna be 10 millimeter bolts spread around the perimeter of it. So we're gonna remove that with a 10 millimeter socket. Set our bolts off to the side. Now we should be able to remove our fan assembly. All right guys, so next we have to grab a clip removal tool and we're gonna pop all of these clips out and then we could uh, have our wiring harness loose. We're gonna start over here and make our way around. Now, once we have all of these popped out of place, we're gonna remove the connectors to our parking sensors. Just gonna press down on this tab here, like so. Move on down to this middle one. Move 
move up to our fog light. Remove our connector to the fog light. Set that off to the side. Grab our clip removal tool. Pop this one out of place. Like so. Now we can move over to the side piece of the bumper. Gonna remove this clip here. One more clip on each side of this bumper. Then we can grab a Phillips head screwdriver. We're gonna remove these screws. Two more. All right, and last one. Make sure you hold up this side. Now you can remove this piece on the other side of the bumper. So next we're gonna have to remove this side trim piece. So we're gonna grab these panel removal tool, clip removal tool, excuse me. We're gonna remove these clips for the wiring harness. Push this out of the way. Now we're gonna grab a Phillips head screwdriver. We're gonna remove these three screws. Now we can grab a panel removal tool and we're gonna work our way around on these clips making sure that we pull them back so the tab doesn't get locked in place. So I'm just gonna bend these back. Your fingers might actually work best instead of the removal tool. Except when we get to these types. We have to push and press down. Whoops. Actually, we're gonna have to work our way a little bit farther. Now that we got these two tabs released, this part of the trim piece will fall down a little bit. And from there, it'll move this part, make it repeat this process on the other side of the bumper. All right, so now we're gonna come through in this section and we're gonna remove all of these clips. All we have to do is pull back on this tab here have to relieve this clip. We're gonna go through even up here and do that same thing. It's a little easier to use your fingers, but make sure you don't pull them back far enough to where they break. Then we have these tabs here. So I'm going to grab our panel removal tool. I'm just gonna press in on that tab. Have it like that. I'm gonna lift this up a little bit. Let's see if we can remove this. There we go. Over to this side. I'm just gonna whoop, hit these. I'm gonna press down. And from here, I'm going to flip this bumper over and I'll show you what to do on the other side. From here, we're going to pull up and we have this trim piece out of our way. So now once that cover is removed, it exposes our two Phillips head screws that'll remove our fog light. So now we can grab a Phillips head screwdriver. We're gonna remove these two screws. Hold on to our fog light. Now, all we could do, slide our fog light out of place. Let's make it repeat that process for the other side. So now that you have both of your fog lights removed, we have our fog light dummy covers. So we're gonna line these up with the holes from our screws. Now we can tighten these back up with our factory screws and our Phillips head screwdriver. So 
So now that you have both of your fog light covers in, we're gonna reinsert our Tundra cover here. I'm gonna have this up. Gonna insert these tabs that are in the slots on each side. Might be a little tricky to get them all lined up, but. Man. So then we could flip this bumper back over and we could reinsert our clips. So now once we got the bumper flipped back over, we're gonna grab these tabs and press them in. So it locks this into place so your cover won't go anywhere. So now we're going to reinsert our side trim. This piece here is going to go under the upper trim, which will line up with this hole here. So I'm going to pull this back a little bit. I'm just going to line up those clips, just like we did for that middle cover there. There we go. Just like that, then we're going to slide those tabs and lock these into place. There we go. Then we can grab our three Phillips head screws. I'm just going to thread these back into its location. Then I'm going to grab my Phillips head screwdriver, we're going to tighten these up. Next we're going to attach the side piece of the bumper. So we're going to line these holes up with these raised holes over here. It's going to slide right into each other like so. We're going to grab our Phillips head screws. Just going to screw these in by hand first. I'm going to keep going around. Now I'm going to tighten all these up with a Phillips head screwdriver. All right, now you can repeat that process for the other side of the bumper. Now we're going to clip our wiring harness back into place. Going to start on this side here. Just going to work our way around. And don't forget to connect the side connectors on that piece we just installed. We'll do that for both sides. Then we can continue making our way around. Plugging in our connectors. Continue our way around. We'll have this connector come up here. All right. So now these connectors will be going into the dummy connectors that are in here. It's nothing connects to it, it's just a plastic piece that fits into your connector. Like so. We can do that process on the other side. So now we can reinstall our fan assembly. So we're going to get this lined up. Make sure our connectors are not in the way. And we can thread in our bolts.
Now we'll tighten these up with our 10 millimeter socket. And go back through and make sure everything's connected. Now we can get this back onto the vehicle. So now we can throw our bumper back onto the vehicle. We're gonna line these top tabs up with our tabs on the vehicle. We're gonna get this nice and lined up. There we go. Now we can go around, start pressing everything into place. Now we'll reinstall our connectors on the passenger side. And our push clip goes down here. And you can repeat this process on the driver's side with your push clip. Now we'll reinstall our four bolts up top. We're gonna thread these into place. And we'll tighten these down with our 10 millimeter socket. So now we can reinstall our fender flares. We're gonna pop these clips into these holes up here. Press that down, like so. And we're gonna thread in our small 10 millimeter bolts all around. Now we'll tighten all these up with our 10 millimeter socket. So now you can repeat that process on the other side. Now we got four more bolts and we're going to reinsert on the bottom of our bumper. And we'll tighten these up with our 10 millimeter socket. So now we have to bleed our brakes. Our master cylinder is in the driver front, so we're gonna work farthest away and work our way towards that. So in that case, will be the right rear. We're gonna go from right rear to the other side and then passenger front to the driver front. And each time you're gonna make sure that you top off your brake fluid in the master cylinder because you don't want that to run out. So now we can get started on bleeding our brakes. So now I grabbed a homemade brake bleeder. We have a tube that goes into the top of our cap that feeds down to some fresh brake fluid down here. And I also drilled a hole up top to relieve some pressure. We also put a zip tie on the end of our tube so we can put it on our brake bleeder and it won't leak. So now to get started, we're in the right rear. We're gonna remove this rubber boot on top of our bleeder valve. Set that boot off to the side. Then I'm going to grab the end of this tube. I'm going to slide that over top. That zip tie is there to hold that in place. And then once you grab a buddy and have him in the driver's seat, 
He's going to pump up the brakes and hold, and then while he's holding, you're gonna grab your wrench and crack this bleeder valve open. And you might have to do it a couple times since we redid the brake hose. But once it starts to have brake fluid come out, then you close that back up and you keep repeating that process. All right, so for the rear, it's gonna be an eight millimeter wrench for our bleeder valve. So now you'll ask your buddy to pump up your brakes. Pump it up, holding, and you're gonna crack this open. You see those air bubbles coming through. I'm gonna tighten this back up. All right, pump it up, open it up. Make sure we don't let those air bubbles back in. Tighten that back up, pump it up, holding. Keep that going, tighten that up. One more time, holding. All right, and as you can see, we have a clean, straight fluid coming through and no air bubbles. So at that point, we can remove our hose here, put our cover back on. And now we'll move over to the driver's side rear. All right, so we tackled the driver rear off camera. So now we're gonna move up to our passenger front. I'm gonna slide over our tube, like so. And the front bleeder valves are a 10 millimeters wrench, and the backs are eights. So now I'm gonna have my buddy pump it up. Holding, see all that air coming through. I'm gonna close that up, pump it up. As you can see, it's starting to pump up some clean brake fluid. Pump it up, close that up. One more time for me. Actually, we'll go one more time. Pump it up. All that clean fluid, no bubbles, so we're good. We're gonna take off our bleeder. See all that fluid go back into our catch pan. Now we can do the driver front, and then you're gonna go back and you're gonna feel that brake pedal, and you wanna make sure that it's stiff and not spongy, or and make sure it does not go to the floor. All right guys, so now that we have all four brakes bled, we're going to have to top off our master cylinder. So we're gonna grab some dot three and four, or either one, it allows both. We're gonna grab a funnel here, put that in there. Grab our brake fluid. We don't have to go up too much since I topped it off periodically after each cylinder. So we're just gonna add this in. You can give it a wiggle to see where that fluid's at. You gotta go up a little bit more. All right. Put our cap back on our brake fluid. Remove our funnel. Set that down. You can grab our cap. Twist. Now your brake fluid is topped off. All right guys, so there's one more thing I'd like to add. Uh, you're going to have to put in this park sensor if equipped, and to do so, all you have to do is remove the passenger side headlight and remove those connectors, and there'll be the sensor on the back of that headlight, and you'll put this on top over your sensor. So that's gonna wrap up the install on our Toyota 3-inch TRD suspension lift kit for your 22 to 23 four-wheel drive Tundra without rear air ride and ABS system, excluding TRD Pro. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and for all things Tundra, keep it right here at ExtremeTerrain.com.